Hi, so what we are doing today is we are going to be talking about amphibians. So this is 30-3 in your textbook. Um, some examples of amphibians are this tiger salamander right here, um, frogs, and Sicilians. So what is an amphibian? It's an, an amphibian is a vertebrate, so it's a chordate that lives in water as a larva, like a tadpole. I'm sure you've all seen those before. And on land as an adult. So they have two homes. They breathe with lungs as an adult. And obviously if they're in water as a larva, then they breathe with gills then. They have moist skin. The moist, it has to be moist. Otherwise, um, it has to be moist. Otherwise they would die. Um, because that's what they, they can respire through their skin. Uh, we had some salamanders and I've had frogs as class pets. Or for a project, I guess the frogs weren't class pets, but they got out one time and their skin was really, really, really all wrinkled and they were almost dead because they didn't have access to water. So we had to put them back in the water. So they definitely need to have a way to keep their skin moist. So usually amphibians live close to water because even as adults, um, if they can live on land, they have to reproduce in the water and they need to have moist skin. They do not have scales and claws. If you have ever, have ever touched a frog or if you've ever touched a salamander, they're kind of slimy with their moist skin. They don't have scales and their paws, their paws, their um, webbed feet do not have claws. So these are the characteristics that you need to know about amphibians. They have moist skin, like I told you, and it is smooth. They undergo metamorphosis. So their larvae live in the water, like I said, like a tadpole. We'll talk about a frog, for example, and we'll talk about that later. But the tadpole um, lives in the water, and then it has to change its appearance so that it can live on land. Because if you notice, a tadpole has a tail, but a frog does not have a tail. Uh, they have a three-chambered heart as adults because they live on land and takes more energy to live on land. So therefore, they need to have their oxygen Nated blood and their deoxygenated blood separated. So they have a three chambered heart as adults. Some have two chambers as larvae. Their habitat, larva is aquatic, like I said, adult is terrestrial. Like I said, larva breathe with their gills because they're aquatic, and adults use their lungs and their skin. They lay jelly like eggs. It literally looks like jello with little black dots in it. Um, that lack membranes. So any mute, any poisons that are in the water get into the eggs because there's no membrane separating that. And if they do have feet, they're webbed to help them to swim. The first amphibians appeared in the late Devonian period, about 360 million years ago. The transition from water to land required that the vertebrates had to be able to breathe air because now they have to get their oxygen from the air instead of getting their oxygen from the water. They have to protect themselves and their eggs from drying out. Well, how are they going to do that? And they had to support themselves against the pull of gravity because now they don't have the buoyance, buoyancy that is in the water. So here's a frog, and here's some of the adaptations that they have. They have lungs, and if you ever get to dissect a frog, you'll see that they're kind of tiny compared to like a mammal's lungs. Their skin has to be moist. It says the skin and, skin and the lining of the mouth cavity of many adult amphibians are thin and they're richly supplied with blood vessels so diffusion can occur, so oxygen can diffuse in to their bloodstream. Uh, their legs of a land vertebrate must be strong enough to hold its weight. And if you've ever heard of anybody ordering frog legs at a restaurant, I used to waitress and I used to serve frog legs at Friday nights. They're, that's the part of the, they're very muscular to help them to be able to support their weight and jump. They actually have a pelvic girdle because that's what their femur attaches to. So their legs attach to that pelvic girdle. So here's all sorts of different species of amphibians. So the class amphibia is relatively small. There's not a lot of them. And it's quite diverse because you have the salamanders, which have a tail like this as an adult. I keep hitting the wrong button. I'm so sorry. Um, they have salamanders that, these are tiger salamanders. I used to have those as class pets. They're super cute. Their little tiny hands would hold onto your finger. And um, they like to eat live food. So if you do have salamanders as pet, a pet, you can't buy it like canned food. They want to chase their flies and their things like that. They um, are they don't really want to be kept hostage, I think. So we let them go eventually. Um, see the, you can see their eyes, which we'll talk about, and their mouths. But these are all different species of amphibians. Now we can go on. 
So here is the inside. So when you dissect a frog, you will see uh, here's your mouth, right? And then it leads to the esophagus, just like you. You have the esophagus here, which leads to your stomach. Here's your stomach. Here's your intestine. And then here's your cecum. And then this is the oh, cecum is like a large intestine, which leads to their cloaca. They only have one opening, which their eggs can go out of if they're female, and their feces can go out of, and their urine waste can go out of. They also have a liver, which is this large organ right here in the gallbladder down here. The liver helps to produce bile, which digests fats, and the gallbladder stores it. Stores the excess bile that is produced until they can eat something with fat in it. That's the cloaca. That's that word I just said. That That is their waste. And eggs, reproductive, comes out of that. So urine, eggs, or sperm, or I can say sperm if it's a male, uh, come out of that. But not at the same time, because we don't want sperm and feces to fertilize the eggs, because that wouldn't go well. In most larval amphibians, gas exchange occurs through the skin and the gills, like I said, in adults, lung, and the skin. So the circulatory system, how many chambers are in the heart? Do you remember? One, two, three, three. They have two atrium and one ventricle. So once you're on land, they start to try to separate the oxygen-rich blood and the oxygen-poor blood. So these are the atrium up here. This is the ventricles. See how close the heart is to the lungs so it can get that oxygen from the lungs? These are the kidneys right here. They filter the blood. Here's their bladder that drains right into the cloaca. So this is that metamorphosis I was talking about. So they do something called amplexus. Amplexus is where a female frog and a male frog attached to each other can go hours to days and they lay their sperm and the eggs at the same time, which is beneficial because you don't want the female to lay her eggs and then like two hours later the male come and lay his sperm because they're not going to find each other in the water with the currents and things like that and the animals eating them. So usually they lay a lot because not all of them survive because like I said, the sperm might not find the egg or an animal will eat that at one not. So they do something called the amplexus. So the male and female attach to each other, then they lay them simultaneously. And see how this looks like jelly, like this jelly ball? So that's a fertilized egg, which is called a zygote. And then when that hatches, so any mutants can get in here and cause some massive DNA damage if the water's poisoned or has some type of chemical in it. This is a tadpole then. It has a tail and gills. And then this would be considered a froglet if once it has tails and, this is a tail, sorry, has tails and legs, and it's called a froglet. And then that tail go, goes away with something called apoptosis, and then you get that young frog. So step one, fertilization in the water. It has to occur in the water because they don't have a membrane to prevent the eggs from drying out, so they'll just die right away on land. So it has to occur in the water. And once that fertilized egg hatches, it's a tadpole. Once that tail disappears, or once the tadpole gets legs, then it's a froglet, and then the tail disappears and becomes a young frog. Adults uh, can typically breed in about one to two years. It kind of depends upon the species, but it's external fertilization and it happens in the water. This is a really cool picture. Um, so obviously, the nostril, the mouth, and here's their eye. This is their eardrum. They don't have ears like we do. This is called the tympanic membrane. So that is how they hear. There's three groups of amphibians alive today. Salamanders, which we talked about. Frogs and toads are in the same group together. The last word, one is Sicilians. Those are more rare. So salamanders and newts have long bodies. So long bodies and tails. They also undergo metamorphosis though. Most have four legs. Both adults and larvae are carnivores. Adults usually live in the moist woods where they tunnel under rocks and rotting logs, but it has to be moist. Frogs and toads have the ability to jump to see how their legs are bent, unlike the salamanders. They have long legs. Toads have relatively short legs and are limited to short hops. Frogs can jump longer because their legs are larger. And lastly, Sicilians, they kind of look like earthworms, or, but they are not. Um, they're legless animals that live in water or burrow in moist soil or sediment. So you know that they're not an earthworm because they have three chambers to their hearts. They have to they lay eggs and reproduce in water. They are able to live on land as an adult. So earthworms don't do any of that. So see them feed on small invertebrates like termites. All right, let me know if you have questions.